This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. A State Department official working on human rights issues in the Middle East resigned Wednesday in protest against U.S. support for Israel's assault on Gaza. Anel Shiline worked as a foreign affairs officer in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor for a year before publicly resigning. In an op-ed published in CNN, she wrote, quote, For the past year, I worked for the office devoted to promoting human rights in the Middle East. I believe strongly in the mission and in the important work of that office. However, as a representative of a government that is directly enabling what the International Court of Justice has said could plausibly be a genocide in Gaza, such work has become almost impossible. Unable to serve an administration that enables such atrocities, I have decided to resign from my position at the Department of State, she wrote. Anel Sheline is the most significant protest resignation over U.S. support for Israel's assault on Gaza since the resignation in October of Josh Paul, the senior State Department official involved in arms transfers to foreign governments. Anel Sheline joins us now from Washington, D.C. Anel, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you tell us further about the decision you made? Thanks so much for having me and for your coverage of this issue. Um, I, I hadn't initially planned to resign publicly. I hadn't been at state for very long, and I didn't think it would necessarily matter. But I decided to go public because when I started to tell colleagues that I was planning to resign over Gaza, so many people's response was, please speak out, please speak for us. Many people are not in a position where they, they feel they could resign, or they are trying to do what they can on the inside. There's still a lot of important crucial work the State Department does. Um, and so I decided I would go ahead and go public. Well, you told, uh, Anel, you told the Washington Post that you tried to raise concerns internally with dissent cables and at staff forums. So what was the result of that? And how are other people uh, within state, as you said, uh, trying to speak out within uh, the, the State Department to change policy? Yes, many people are, are extremely horrified by the U.S. government's position on this uh, horrific conflict and, and the actions of the, both the Israeli and the U.S. governments. Um, there is the dissent channel inside the State Department. Um, I, was in, I co wrote a cable and signed other cables. Um, there have been forums for State Department employees to, to speak out. Um, I spoke with supervisors. I was able to speak with um, a um, senior official about my resignation. Um, I think at the end of the day, many people inside state know that this is a, a horrific policy and can't believe that the United States government is engaged in such actions that contravene American values so directly, but the leadership is not listening. I want to go to the State Department spokesperson, Matt Miller, being questioned by a reporter about the internal dissent channel within the State Department and employees raising concerns over the policies. What is the point of the the whole channel and, like, I mean, the secretary listens and we, we've all reported about various listening sessions uh, between mid-level or, like, more senior officials with the secretary, more junior officials. If it's not, if, if it's, it's being heard, but if it's not taken into account in the policy at all, so, then don't you think it's so, a little bit pointless? So I would disagree with that completely. It is taken into account in the policymaking process. Um, the secretary has heard things in those meetings that he takes on board and that, he, that influence his thinking and that he brings to bear in making policy decisions. Now, if what you mean is, are we going to execute a complete reversal of the policy no, that we, I mean. we implemented, that's not what I mean. or uh, are you going to are we going to implement exactly some of the policies that the people in these meetings have no, called not at for? All. Um, that's not that, how. That's, hold on. That just, that's not how this process works. That's not how government. No, works. I don't and that's, think that's, that's anyone's expectation. Saying, that's not how any organization works. I dare say any of the media organizations in this room. If reporters go to their bosses um, and offer feedback, and the bosses say, "Well." That's a good point. We're going to take that to bear. But on the larger policy, this is the decision that we have made. That's how that's You're how doing a long rant that is on something that works. I didn't suggest. But do you have any examples on, you know, any 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 yeah. changes? I, like, will, I will I'm say, genuinely curious. Yeah, I will say with respect to any number of issues, with respect to the delivery of humanitarian assistance, we have heard good ideas from people inside the building who have come and offered constructive feedback, and we have implemented those. So, now, now, there are people 
that when you say if it, like if the idea is that to the the United States to cut off support for Israel, that's just a fundamental policy ag- uh, disagreement. So when you see uh, people who o- offer interviews that say we want the United States to stop supporting Israel's right to defend itself. That's not something the secretary agrees with. It's not something the president agrees with. And ultimately, um, they are the ones who have the responsibility of making those decisions. So, in L. Line, if you can respond to the State Department spokesperson, Matt Miller. Um, you know, I think American law is quite clear here in terms of the, the Leahy laws, for example, of um, that when a, a foreign military is credibly accused of gross human rights violations, uh, the law is that the U.S. will no longer provide weapons to those units. Um, or 620I of the Foreign Assistance Act, that a, a government um, that is blocking American humanitarian aid is no longer eligible for, for U.S. military assistance. These laws are not being applied. Um, so I think this is not only having a horrific effect on the people of Gaza, but in terms of America's standing in the rest of the world, this administration came in pledging to reestablish American moral leadership, re-engagement with the international community, uphold the law and the so-called rules-based liberal international order. And I, I think it's just become clear that, that this administration is, is not, in fact, conducting, carrying out any of those pledges. And, you know, my work was on human rights, um, which is very important work that the State Department does. But I think on this issue in particular, the, the political calculus has been that U.S. support for Israel is a better political move. Um, but I think what the administration may be starting to see is they may have made the wrong decision on that politically. And Anel, can you uh, explain whether there's any distinction made? There's a blanket statement about U.S. support for Israel, but is there no distinction within discussions at the State Department between different forms of U.S. support for Israel? So, for instance, obviously in this instance, the most important question is that of military aid to Israel at this moment. There, I, I should be clear that, you know, my area of focus, I was not, Israel and Palestine were not part of my portfolio. I was focusing primarily on North Africa. Um, so I can't speak directly to, you know, some of those conversations. I do think, you know, at the end of the day, the U.S.-Israel relationship is of, is considered of such political importance that decisions regarding it are made at the very top. Um, and so while there are other processes and certainly discussions going on inside state, inside other parts of the government about um, some of those nuances you were discussing, um, I, I don't think we're likely to see any public shift on any of that until s- those decisions come from the top that they're ready to, to reimagine the U.S.-Israel relationship. I wanted to go to another clip of the State Department spokesperson, Matt Miller, saying the Biden administration has not found Israel's actions in Gaza to be a violation of international law. This is some of what he said. We have not found them to be in violation of international humanitarian law, either when it comes to um, uh, the conduct of the war or when it comes to the provision of humanitarian assistance. That was this week, Anel Sheline, uh, either violation of international law or when it comes to providing humanitarian assistance. And yet President Biden says he is building a port because the Palestinians cannot get enough aid. Exactly. I, I think that the the evidence speaks for itself. We've had, you know, not only the, the ICJ's ruling, not only the UN Security Council ruling. Um, the, clearly, the administration is unwilling to to admit to reality. Um, and I again, I, I just want to reiterate. I think this is not only obviously devastating for the for the lives of people in Gaza, but is doing incredible damage to America's standing on the international stage. It is incredibly demoralizing for people inside the State Department, many of whom believe very deeply in what America says it stands for. Um, so I'm, I just, I, I'm trying to speak on behalf of, of those many, many people who feel so betrayed 
by by our government stance. And Anel, could you explain uh, the effect that the massive protests across the United States have had uh, within the State Department, what discussion there was of them, and then, of course, the uncommitted vote? So within the State Department, you know, civil servants are, are very committed to their role of being non-political, um, of, of following the the instruction that they receive um, you know within state people are aware of what's going on outside but you know this is not the first time that people have um, been involved or or had to um, carry out policies they perhaps did not agree with um, and it is something that many of these people have signed up for this is this is the role of carrying out America's foreign policy um, on this issue, I think because it has been so horrific and because we are seeing such growing political pushback from the American public, um, people are increasingly frustrated. Um, you know, many other people with whom I spoke said they're, they're considering resigning. Um, but again, it's, it is challenging for, for someone to, um, you know, this, it, it's, it's not easy to, to not have a job in this country. I wanted to quote further what you've said in explanation of why you're resigning. Um, you said you're haunted by the final social media post of Aaron Bushnell, the 25-year-old U.S. Air Force serviceman who self-immolated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington on February 25th. You quote him, many of us like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery? or the Jim Crow South, or apartheid? Uh, what would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is, you're doing it right now. If you can explain what that meant to you and how people have responded to you. Um, sorry. I, um, you know, that, that post, um, I think spoke to me and many people who had to really look at what they were doing um, and whether, um, you know, for me, I have a young daughter and I, I thought about in the future if she were to ask me, you know, what were you doing when this was happening? You were at the State Department. I, I want to be able to tell her that I didn't stay silent. Um, so, and I, and I know many people who are deeply affected by those words um, that Aaron Bushnell posted. Um, and I, I do think people are trying to do what they can. There is still very important work being done inside the State Department. Um, but I do think until, until our top levels of leadership are ready to make a change, um, there's very little that, that the rank and file are, are able to do. Anel Sheline, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Um, Anel has just resigned from the State Department in protest of U.S. support for Israel's war on Gaza. She worked as foreign affairs officer in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor. She's also the first State Department official to publicly resign since Josh Paul did months ago.